Hello friends, Mike Adams here with Learn Audacity. Today, I want to show you the difference between loudness normalization for a particular RMS level as it relates to audiobooks and regular normalization. What's the difference between the two and can I use either one in setting my levels for ACX? Let's get going. So I have a screen here before us where I recorded two pieces of audio just a few minutes ago for the purpose of explaining this and showing the difference between the two. I recorded these just a few moments ago in that fancy recording booth that you see right behind me. So let's take a look at this. Both of these tracks are the same. I duplicated the top track, so they're identical tracks. And what I want to do is I want to normalize the top track with regular normalization. And then I want to use loudness normalization to a minus 20 RMS on the bottom one. And I want to look at the RMS levels of each after I do that. And I want to run ACX check on both of them after I do that to see if uh, it works. So let's start with that top track. I'm just gonna highlight the entire track. And the first thing that I wanna do is come up to analyze and I just want to measure the RMS level just for fun. The RMS level right now is pretty low. It's a negative 27. Remember in ACX, your RMS level has to be between a negative 18 and a negative 23. So we are about four dB too low to pass that right at the moment. And if I look at the bottom track, it's gonna be the same because again, I just duplicated it and I haven't put any effects on it. Now you'll notice too that this track, even though it's not compressed, it is, it's got a very good dynamic range. That is, there's not a lot of difference between the loudest parts of the, of the waveform and the quietest parts. So I'm not going to add compression to it during this test. I just want to do normalization and loudness normalization. So with that top track selected, let's come up now and let's go back to the analyze window. And this time, let's look at ACX check and let's see what it does. And of course, all three fail because our waveform is way out of compliance to ACX. Remember, ACX has requirements for peak audio that can't exceed 3 dB. The RMS audio, as I mentioned a, a moment ago, needs to be between a minus 18 and a minus 23 dB. And the noise floor can't be quiet. It needs to be a negative 60 or lower, but not silence. You don't want silence in here or it's going to sound unnatural and it's not going to pass the ACX specs. So I'm going to click OK. And then let's come back up to this top track while we've got it here, and let's do some normalization on it. This is just regular normalization. And we're going to normalize to a negative three dB peak level because that's the maximum that ACX will allow. So we can leave remove DC offset checked. That's not really much of an issue these days, but let's leave it checked just because. And then we're going to normalize to the peak amplitude of a negative three. So I'm gonna click apply. And the waveform still looks good. There's a little bit of loud spot there at the beginning and maybe a couple in the middle, but it looks pretty good. Now let's come back up and let's look at ACX check one more time. And it passed. Just like that, it passed. Now remember, I haven't put any compression on this because the original audio was pretty good. If you can get good audio initially, that is your, your audio is consistent in the level initially, then that can eliminate the need to have to compress. You don't always have to compress. In fact, if you put too much compression on a piece of audio, you can ruin it. So again, I'm not going to worry about compressing this one. I, I don't need to because the dynamic range, the difference between the loudest parts and the quietest parts are pretty much consistent throughout the waveform. If you can get a good recording in your initial audio, it's so important because it saves so much time in post. In other words, if you use good microphone technique and you stay the same distance from the microphone while you're talking, it really helps to smooth out your waveform. It keeps from getting large uh, amplitude uh, differences as you're recording and it keeps it more uniform from beginning to end. And so learning good microphone technique and realizing and uh, knowing that you need to stay a certain distance from the microphone while you're talking can really help. Again, room conditioning is important as well. And we'll talk about that perhaps in another video. So this past ACX check, 
you can see that my peak level is a negative three. My RMS level is 21.9. It's probably a little lower than I like, but it passed. And the noise floor is at a negative 87.29. Again, I recorded this in that fancy booth behind me there, which isn't an expensive booth, but it really works well. And so I got, I get real good recordings when I'm in that booth. Now I'm going to click OK. And then let's come down to the bottom track. And instead of normalizing it this time, let's go to the effect drop down uh, menu and let's do loudness normalization. Loudness normalization in Audacity does two things. You can set it for RMS as I've got this set here, or you can set it for perceived loudness simply by clicking this drop down menu and going to perceived loudness. Perceived loudness is LUFS. It's the perceived loudness of the file from end to end. Well, we're doing an audiobook demonstration here, so we're not really concerned with perceived loudness. So I'm going to go back to RMS. And when I do RMS, I like to set my level for a negative 20 dB. RMS is just the average audio at any given moment. As you're recording, your audio has, has a higher volume and lower volume, and then it has an average of that sample point. The average of that sample point is RMS. And so this is the average loudness of the waveform. If you look at that bottom waveform, you'll see that I've got a light blue section uh, kind of running through the middle of it. That's the RMS level, that light blue section. The dark blue is the transients and the peaks and the valleys as I'm talking. But overall, the average volume is represented by that light blue color in the middle of the waveform. That's RMS. So I'm going to leave this at a negative 20, which is where I normally put my RMS, and I'm going to click Apply. And when I click apply, you can see that both the waveforms look pretty similar. I've got a little bit higher peaks on the bottom one than I do on the top one. But let's do what we did with the top one, but let's do it with the bottom one. And let's analyze or run ACX check and see what we have. And ACX check passed two of the parameters. The parameter that it didn't pass is the peak audio, because as you can see, we've got some high peaks going on here that exceed 3 dB or a negative 3 dB uh, peak level. In fact, this one's the highest to set at uh, negative 1.04 dB. So let's fix that. I'm going to click OK. I've got the track highlighted still. Let's come back up to the effect menu and let's go back into volume and compression. And this time let's put a limiter on it. I like to use a soft limiter when I'm doing vocals because it's a kinder, gentler limiter. And you can see here that we've got it set to a negative three. I'm going to leave the hold right where it is. And we're not going to do any makeup gain. We don't want to add any more gain to this than what we already have because our RMS looks good. So I'm going to click apply. And once I click apply, I'm going to come back up to the analyze and I'm going to run ACX check again. And you can see that now I am passing all three uh, parameters in my ACX check. This doesn't always guarantee that ACX is going to accept your audio, but it's going to get you uh, well within the ballpark. I've not had a, a piece of audio rejected by ACX once I get these three parameters set, but some people do. So, you know, there's always that possibility. So we're looking at a negative 3.11 dB on the peak. RMS level is a negative 20 point, uh, what, 0 0.05. So call it a negative 20, which is really consistent. That's where I like to keep it. And then the noise floor is at an 85.17. Remember, the noise floor is the amount of noise that's produced by a device with no signal present. In other words, if I back away from this mic or if I walked out of the room and left this mic on and my audio interface on and uh, just left and listened to the resulting quietness, that's the noise floor. This microphone injects or creates a little bit of noise. It's really a quiet microphone, this SM7B, but it does produce a little tiny bit of noise. My audio interface produces a little bit of noise. My computer produces a little bit of noise. And then the ambiance of the room produces noise. All of those things combine into the noise floor. So I've got good noise floor here. Again, I was in the uh, nice booth back there when I recorded, and that's most of the reason why I have a good noise floor. So 85.17 on the noise floor, I'm going to click OK. And let's look at the noise floor again on that top one that we normalized. Excuse me. And on it, it's an 87.29. So the noise floor is a little bit lower on the one that I normalized. It's a little, it's a little bit down there by about 3 dB. Uh, from what it was when I did uh, loudness normalization as opposed to just normalization. 
either one of these will pass. You can use either one. It's really, it really boils down to personal preference. I like to use RMS because I can set my RMS value right here before I export my file, before I export my chapter. So that's just a quick look at the difference between normalizing or normalization and loudness normalization to achieve a particular RMS level, in this case, a minus 20. So I hope you found this helpful. And until next time, y'all take care.